Hi, folks. Uh, it's right at the top of the hour. Welcome back. Um, we're going to get started in just a minute here. Uh, we're excited to feature the latest um, on the 3D showcase. But um, yeah, just to set the stage, if you're uh, if you've been following along, we're in the basically exactly the halfway point of the IIIF online meeting. Um, we're we're happy to have you. So thanks for joining. Um, we have uh, two more sessions for today. So this at this hour, the 3D showcase um, of the latest work from the 3D community and technical specification group. Um, and then starting uh, one hour from now, uh, we have our second set of lightning talks um, that'll conclude the lightning talks uh, for this conference. Um, and then we have one more day of, uh, of some materials uh, for you tomorrow. So uh, featuring, uh, the work of a couple of different groups, uh, maps, museums, um, and then some strategic planning um, being presented by the executive committee of Chipalaya. So I think um, we were a minute or two past the top of the hour. Um, I'm excited to uh, welcome a number of the folks um, who oversee or shepherd, maybe is the right word, uh, the work of the different um, community and technical groups um in triple af so uh i know um ronald's haynes uh ed silverton julie winchester is the chairs of the tsg i think are around um ronald maybe i'll pass it to you and you can introduce um the others who are um, going to be presenting here today but uh thanks for joining and uh yeah have a great session thanks so much josh and thanks everyone for joining uh just uh share the screen hopefully you see that I'm going to presume you do. Yep, looks good. Perfect. Um, and just so you know, Josh Glenn, um, that I've, I've put that in um, the stored area, the shared area. So it'll be there for later or for reference. Um, I We may have to see if other uh, co-chairs are around. Uh, Ed had to send apologies with some family duties. He was around earlier, obviously. And I think Julie has sent apologies, but We'll see. If other co-chairs are here, please pipe up, join in as we go along. But I'll take you through uh, some of update. For uh, some are new on this call, which is great. Uh, welcome. And for those who uh, may have seen past presentations, we'll, you'll see some old favorites as well as some new material. So without further ado, let's move on. Um, We've started uh, over the last year plus talking about digital dioramas and uh, increasingly metaverse. Uh, none of us can escape the discussions about metaverse, but I'll come back because we're trying to look at meaningful metaverse. And the reason that these things come together is because of the challenge of not just looking at 3D objects on their own, but putting them together in situ, in, in a, a scene, and that can include uh, not just other 3D objects, but audio video material, 2D material as well. So uh, come back to that and um, some tantalizing uh, developments in that regard. Uh, there are two 3D groups, as I think you've got the impression so far, which is uh, the Cipro 3D community group, which looks at uh, the ongoing work, and that's the oldest of the 3D groups, ongoing uh, showcase, uh, as we're just hinting at today, but also uh, demonstrations, experiments, presentations from various groups. And I just noticed in the chat that Mike Boyd's here, um, very schedules were, were uh, challenging. So hi, Mike, uh, do jump. He's co-chairing the Triple I 3D community group, as you'll see, and Scott McAvoy had to send apologies so Mike, jump in uh, at any point, um, and we'll just make sure if, if you see anything you want to comment on. I uh, will do, Ron. I'll keep an eye on chat as well and let you know if anything comes up there. Perfect. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate it. And of uh, technical specification group, our co-chairs um, are Don Childress, who I think couldn't be here. Tom's on, on uh, the line. So those are representatives from the technical review committee we're just hearing from but also we've had contributions from many of the others, uh, Rob and um, Simeon, et cetera. Um, yours truly, Ronald Haynes, um, and then Ed Silverton and Julie Winchester. Moving on, let's see, let me just go back, yeah. So of the two groups, um, each meets monthly. Um, they're not, they have their own schedules. 
and anyone here is welcome to come to either or both at any time. We also, like other um, groups, keep uh, running notes and recordings of past sessions. This is just a hint of some of the sessions we've had. Um, it's a bit of sort of uh, earlier greatest hits, but there are many more and it's worth looking at. We've also been cataloging use cases for some time and we've codified them a bit in order to form the technical specification group. Um, and so, as we'll see, that's been a part of our guiding principles. We have a charter, obviously, for the technical spec group. It's worth looking at. And these slides will be available, and those are links to follow up if you'd like. And we've only started, but we'll come, keep coming back to exploring options to integrate other parts of the IIIF world, uh, because a digital diorama, a scene, can incorporate all sorts of things. And there'll be hints of that as well. Of the formats we've been looking at so broadly, and there are many in the 3D world, as, as you'll know, but among the, the popular ones, GLTF, um, which comes from the Kronos group and has become a standard, an ISO standard. They did that with the help of the X3D ISO standard coming from the Web3D group. And they're the inherited, we'll say more about that. They've been around for about 30 years, or so X3D and its predecessors. DICOM used in the medical areas um, in particular, from CTs to um, MRIs to sonograms, et cetera. And uh, more recently, you have conversations with the world of HBIM or Heritage Building Information Management, RTI, Reflective Transformance, and uh, 360 video. So although some of these are not explicitly 3D, Increasingly, there's an effort to try to mix and match some of these things or find a way to be coherent and not always diverging in how we approach these things. There are considerations for sustainability and with people like the Digital Preservation Coalition and the CS3DP Community Standards for 3D Data Preservation, we've, been, we've had conversations over time. And Part of what we do, we all do in IIIF, is to try to set down um, the, the principles and the practicalities of interoperability that can help assure sustainability. I won't say much about the decolonization ideas, but suffice it to say that there have been experiments and there are ongoing efforts to see if we can capture some items, can they physical items be returned or can they be swapped or something? And there are some interesting explorations, including a group in Oxford that is robotically carving some of the um, Parthenon sculptures held in the British Museum. And we'll see what comes of that. They're, I think they're sort of tempting the idea of maybe swapping, send originals back, keep the copies or vice versa. We'll see where that goes. Reference workflows in the community have been interested in all along and we'll keep coming back to sort of, once we try to get clear on interoperability, so what would it take, uh, not only for a well-funded organization, but smaller and less funded. And I've mentioned metaphor, uh, meta metaverse ideas, and you've heard the joke, I'm sure, that we're trying to avoid the madness of the multi-metaverse. Um, again, convergence is a key here. This is a rough idea of where we're headed. Um, so the two groups complement each other. And in the demonstrations, the discussions, and some of the experimental um, explorations in the community group um, certainly give ideas and also often um, mean people then get involved with the technical spec side. And so we're still working in the in the earlier days for the TSG is less than a year old. We've been meeting all through the year. And we're very seriously looking at funding options. Um, we were a little let down by a traditional funder, but uh, now we have some interesting other potentials. Let's bring back in the end. The 3D Community Group. Um, this is a bit of historic capture, but it's many have been involved and continue to be involved one way or the other. And some come and go or give presentations or when they have updates. And we have more, uh, the, the list it will is bigger than this. And our running notes indicates uh, representation of people and institutions. 
the technical spec group, this is the, the makeup um, of the community support. So this was important for starting the technical spec that we had commitments that included people who had material that they would be able to lend or, or support and be able to carry out some experimentation, including, so that's holders of uh, objects of collections that are of interest and will experiment, but also some of the people who develop viewers uh, or have repositories. Um, so you'll see people like Sketchfab and Morphosource, as well as various museum and library groups uh, and a, a number of research institutions. So we're still, uh, it's good. Uh, it's, a, it's a good combination and a good uh, source of material, uh, but Welcome to have more if you'd like to join in sort of later. Mike's kindly put the um, running notes of the community group in the chat area. Thanks, Mike. Okay, so what uh, what do people want to do with IIIF and particularly 3D? And what would be their user stories? I've mentioned that a bit. What's going to look like? Um, what does it look like now and maybe in three or four years? So. Just going to have a glimpse. Current use includes uh, these are some key examples from uh, in Brighton, the UK, Royal Pavilion and Museums Collection has an explorer and 3D objects in there. Morphosource, some of you will know, and has lots of uh, objects from various collections in multiple countries, including the ability to interact with CT MRI, CT. Um, computer to tomography. So x-ray slices, um, many people will know from human uh, work, but also uh, animal and inanimate uh, paleontologists and mummy specialists and vase explorers use it. Uh, and then the British Library um, has Jane Austen's writing desk and there's an exhibit um, that's been set up, exhibit.so we heard about earlier. Uh, certainly yesterday. Um, and so these are some examples. Um, let's call it triple IF, triple IF ish. But to the point, um, in the TSG work, uh, certainly in the de developing for it, uh, the, there are examples that keep in a GitHub of uh, what a triple F presentation, an API manifest looks like with 3D objects. Um, uh, there's been a cookbook entry about this as well. Glenn was involved with that, Ed, Julie, et cetera. Um, but also uh, some worked out examples from the ones just shown. So that might be worth looking through later, uh, that it's something of where we are now. Also, um, I know uh, Joe Padfield, among others, on the this session um, has mentioned PIDs or persistent IDs. And people like Morphosource use both ARC IDs and DOIs. Um, and we're in touch with other repositories that may or may not have PIDs, but it's an ongoing discussion, which Joe is one of the ones part of, obviously, our leader. So earlier work included user stories from a variety of surveys, um, including a big EU project, the second bullet point, toward the bottom, survey on quality and digitization of tangible cultural heritage through 3D content in European. It's a small amount, but it's there. And then the um, community group and TSG have been collecting as well. There's a little bit about that. And so I'm gonna go through the six core ones that help form the TSG. Um, and just very briefly, these would be good for review later, but Simply put, displaying a 3D model, specifying position, orientation, and scale. One of the challenges many will have, or if not, you probably will, if you are in, involved with interacting with 3D model, is you sometimes find yourself in the middle of it, or as if you're floating above a world in a satellite or ship. So getting scaling right and orientation position, all that's relevant. And it's even more important when you're mixing objects, more than one. So I'm going to skim through these, as I said. This um, Julie put these together a while back, and they always reminds me of a chess set in sort of live format. Uh, but 
obviously putting multiple objects models in a shared space is important and again knowing how to get scaling right and positioning etc especially if you're going to carry out life-size chess but that's a, another challenge the third uh, one display a 3d model alongside a 2d image or images and av content in a single viewing experience and uh, av content the the video it's sort of repeating gif is um, from ct scans um, that just show different slices and going moving through exploring the slices of a of a scan of some sort i think it's ct might be mri but i think it's ct and the fourth annotated displayed 3d model with the commentary is this example from sketchfab with annotation on a particular uh, object that's uh, been scanned and rendered in that environment and the fifth sharing camera position orientation and target and also being able to get a unique url and go back to that same view angle etc which i think we many of us take for granted in the 2d world but it's a little more challenging the 3d but it needs to be there or certainly it's a big use case. And finally, of the six core ones, display multiple 3D models that can be rotated and manipulated independently. That would be the chess with statues example, among others. So I'll skim through this as well. Interoperability and sustainability challenges uh, include the workflows, the output formats, the post-production, almost anyone who works with 3D has a lot of post-production work, sometimes more than the capture process. And maybe some will testify to that as we go along. And then also setting which access is up, scaling, et cetera. Copyright and licensing is challenging like anything else with a few twists. And I've already mentioned some of the other areas um, like persistent IDs, but increasingly, models have to be viewable across repositories um, so that you put in scenes and that's where we need a lot more effort and that's where we're putting a lot of effort so uh, we've heard from about av and we'll probably hear more uh and just a shout out joseph has uh put in the chat more about the pids work from the torta national collection effort here in the uk thanks joseph thanks joe this uh, from the British Library Sound Collection, but we heard about uh, other collections uh, in um, Northwestern, Kentucky, et cetera. And uh, it's just interesting to think, so some of these would want to then maybe in, in this case, put uh, the sound coming from a dance together with instruments that produced it, like the drums involved, et cetera. Those are the kinds of things people uh, are certainly been talking about. Uh, Josh indicated, showed yesterday in, in the um, showcase yesterday, uh, the infinite canvas. And if you haven't seen it, uh, it's it's worth a look. This shows it in tilt mode, which uh, if you have more than one button, if you click and right click on it, you can move and tilt. And this is still a very helpful experiment to show how 2D audio video, there's video on the top, and a 3D model interact together. And they're all on one plane that you can sort of move through. And if there's time at the end, deliberately making sure there's time for discussion and interaction, but happy to demonstrate these uh, if there's time. Um, yeah, thanks. Uh, Josh put the link directly to the Infinite Canvas experiment. But it is complicated. And it's not made easier by the different 3D environments and um, sources and repositories, et cetera. Um, the two big areas, if people aren't developing directly for WebXR, or for the open web technologies, but um, are working in Unity or Unreal Engine, you see those two alone have different um, Z orientation which way is up and some are left-handed and some right-handed and right-handed includes Blender and uh, Autodesk and a, a number of others. So it's interesting, it, it have to keep track. And the reason this is important is when you put 
an object of one orientation and way up, et cetera, with another, they have to be normalized in some way in order to produce a scene. And just for fun, um, Google certainly uh, is one of the ones, a uh, few who use polar coordinates rather than these Cartesian rectilinear. So you have to love geometry. And thankfully, there are there's more than one in the group who does. Enabling 3D on the web, uh, I've mentioned some standardization process. The uh, X3D from the web 3D group uh, comes out of VRML, which goes back a fair few decades. But it became an ISO standard. And in fact, it's on its, I'll need to correct this, it's on the fourth generation now, just of this year. And with their help, um, the X3D, Web3D group has worked with GLTF. So it's become an ISO standard as well. And GLTF is one of the most uh, popular used in things like Sketchfab and Morphosaurus. And not exclusively, but it is very common. Um, so Brian, um, I don't mind a little interaction. We'll come back to it. 3D, okay. Come back to that later. Thanks, Brian. Uh, WebXR um, is from the W3C Immersive Web Working Group, and it's making possible all manner of things uh, that, and the XR, if you haven't come across, is the way of <laughs> stopping arguing about whether something's VR, AR, or possibly MR for mixed reality which got more complex with Microsoft's HoloLens claiming MR, but let's, let's XR, it's just extended reality, although technically it could be just a, a variable X, but we'll stick with extended. But Web XR, um, and one of the things we'll, we'll, we'll see a good examples of it in a little bit. So the viewers, uh, and particularly we've had a focus on viewers that are used with some kind of repository, but mo in particular, or one or more, but in particular have annotation capabilities. So uh, these are 3D viewers that um, are often open source, almost all are, um, do you make use of open web technologies and almost all are built on top of 3JS, which is a JavaScript library that's common. There is another one that is banded about a little bit, Babylon JS, and People like Amazon seem to favor it a little bit, but they support 3JS and the, ver the vast majority of viewers we have checked seem to be 3JS um, based, which is a hopeful thing that it might make it easier in some of the future developments and uh, collaborative work. So you've probably seen before um, Morphosaurus with it's a left viewer, which is from the universal viewer UV family. And it has uh, lots of capabilities to expect, uh, annotations with measurement, angular, et cetera. It can be within a plane or in a point cloud and can label the top right, the, the astronaut. Moving to Sketchfab, they of course have their an animation and indeed they have, um, sorry, annotation as well as animation. I should be careful and this is, uh, one of the group members uh, examples from a sword museum in Minnesota. Um, so uh, the, the, con the conversations have gone on for a while with Sketchfab, but we'll have to come back to that in terms of how we're gonna pull out uh, things like annotation and interchange. The Smithsonian has its um, own viewer and uh, annotation capabilities. This is an X3D ex examples, a, a few with annotation, including on the right-hand side, the annotation is sort of mapped to a plane parallel to one side of this object. Um, and yeah, so there are, and I'll come back to that. There are different ways to do this. This is a big project out of Lund University in Sweden um, called the Dark Lab. Sounds like Star Wars, but it's digital archeology. span uh, Sorry, but you can think of it either way. Um, th this is a growing concern and they have a, a fairly straightforward way of keeping notes and with it annotations. And thankfully this, like most of the examples so far are JSON based, which is important for where we're gonna be headed for IIIF TS3D annotation. 
And finally, in this group of six is um, the cabinet project out of Oxford that uh, has been going for some time and has annotation as well. So all of these are, groups are part of our discussions uh, to also see if we can start experimenting to see about uh, interchanging. And I'll come back to that shortly. So I think you've seen Exhibit, many of you, but if you haven't, um, it's an online resource available to anyone. And Josh, I know, gave a presentation yesterday, a quick overview of it. Um, it's one of a number of tools that are trying to integrate and make it easier to do storytelling or quizzing or kiosks. And in this case, it can pull 3D objects as well as 2D audio, video, etc. And very much in a kind of tell a story with little labels and um, actions, sort of click or point or touch um, through it. So that's worth looking at if you haven't seen it and getting an idea of how those sort of tools are evolving. This one has come out of a project with a university in Scotland, St. Andrews, but is available anywhere and built on top of some Google technologies that make it um, more readily accessible globally, which helps. Um, one of the other regular members of the TSG, um, Vince, Vincent Marchetti, um, is a, a co-chair of the X3D working group. And he gave a presentation um, a few times back in the um, community group to show this combination of uh, objects, in this case, cups or goblets, uh, what do you call it, a gathering of goblets. Each is from different sources, one's from Sketchfab, one's from an X3D source, and I'm not sure about the other, I have to check. And then the table he created in another environment. So he sort of put these together. And if you uh, follow the link um, later, and I'll come back to the, if there's time, then you can interact with them individually, which is a very telling thing. It's where we're headed. And these are the kind of experiments we're, we've been carrying out. Um, if you haven't come across Hubs from Zilla, um, it's definitely worth it because it's one of the richest open web, web XR enabled technologies, but it's open, free to anyone to use. And you can pick a room that's, they have a selection or you can make your own space. And in that you can populate it with 3D models. They make it easy to come from Sketchfab, but you can upload other models in 3D. You can also put 2D audio and video material, uh, PowerPoint slides. Um, so there are sometimes conferences held. You can have chat and you can see the little panda-like creature on the left. It, you have avatars and you can interact with the avatars. You can even move one in front of an object and take a selfie with yourself or others with whatever objects there. Now, at first that may seem theoretical and we have presentation from them in the community group a while back and that's available for review. But this was an example, and it's from a few years ago, but um, from a computer graphics course in Brighton um, with Sophie Dixon, um, who was also part of the group. Um, and during early lockdown, couldn't get together in person, and so created a room, and the students put their work up on these display boards, the virtual, and then moved around and interacted and had the, the show that way. Um, oh, excellent. Uh, come back to the chat areas. So I want to show you this because it's one of the more recent examples from the community group. And ex what's being done here, I think, is a very interesting example of where we might go with this. All of these things hint, and these are pieces of puzzles that we're trying to put together, as I say, an experiment. Let me see if I can start this. So this is Mozilla Hub Room that's set up for uh, an ancient Peruvian site. It was done by a group called Proximal VR, uh, a Jeffrey Pomerantz working with the North Carolina Museum of Art. And he's worked with Harvard Library among others, perhaps you know. Can you, uh, so hopefully you see this uh, loading. If you can't, do let me know. Yes, we see it. 
Thanks. Can you hear the music? Yes. Good, good. So I'm, I'm just using keyboard um, maneuvers for now. And I'm going to approach this, this slightly ominous looking <laughs> sphere. So if you enter, it, it's, it's actually frozen. Let me see if I can. Yep, there, it started to show itself. Para ustedes, este tema, adiós pueblo de Yacucho. So this is a 360 video bubble with music, obviously. And as you pull away, you get the, the Doppler shift you expect. It's spatial audio as well. Move toward it. Move away from it. I'll stop him. But I hope you get the idea. I'm going to close that. And hopefully back at the slides as expected. Um, it's a very exciting uh, example, I think, of what we might expect in terms of creating scenes and doing them in a mean, meaningful way to either return context for objects that are disparate or create new context. In this case, the um, the, the spatial sphere, I'm tempted to think that's a good pun, it sort of looks like it's an orb from space, uh, is, um, is a bit out of time from this ancient Peruvian scene, but it's a nice sort of way of entering a, another world and uh, annotating it in a, its own way. So I'll move on from there. Two recent experiments, which we intend to carry out with all of the, the viewer developers who are involved, um, was looking at how we might uh, interrogate JSON in a triple IF-ish sort of way um, for annotation in two different models. So um, Ed and uh, Vince Moschetti put together a look at this with um, looking at Google model viewer on one hand and then uh, an X3D viewer on another. And um, you can probably get a hint, just the labeling is a bit different and that's somewhat to be expected, but, but this is sort of early uh, experiment to see, would we be able to say, move that around? And for the exciting results, you'll have to come to the meeting or follow up with us, but so far so good. Um, at, we expect different viewing environments to be a little bit different in labels, but the ability to interchange is crucial for interoperability of annotation. So these are ongoing experiments and worth a look and the links will take you to them if you want to try them out yourself. Some related uh, references worth uh, noting include uh, an initial glossary we've started for the TSG. And uh, so all the work with the community group as well as technical spec, we want to disambiguate as much as possible because there are different uses of terminologies in different 3D environments. So we started that process to just be clear how we're gonna be using it and then as necessary translate it into how Unity might use it as opposed to Unreal Engine, for instance. Um, there's some other uh, options I'd mentioned before, the big European um, study on quality and 3D digitization. That's gonna have, is still having major impacts, including for future funding and potential collaborative work. So keep an eye on that and, or come along and we'll, we'll help you keep an eye on it. And, um, it was just interesting to, in a recent uh, workshop on that dealt with a new 3D viewer being put together in Germany, concerned about metadata in um, repositories, just shared a, an older data dictionary from Morphosource. Increasingly, people are concerned about what's going to be stored in repositories, including um, metadata and some call paradata, sort of how it was collected, what equipment. This isn't, strictly speaking, IIIF on the viewer side, 
but it's going to be part of the bigger world of 3D um, sustainability. So a quick shout out to a couple of developments might be of interest. Um, next year, there's a meant to be an international XR, well, in planning, an international XR metaverse converse, conference to be held in Las Vegas, which could be interesting. Uh, and we'll have a IIIF uh, present, 3D presence there and a potential um, marine museum project. I'm just going to tease at that and more on that as it develops. There's a metaverse standards forum and I've had some interaction with them and even more with the IEEE Metaverse Congress and the incoming um, president of the IEEE Standards Association who are one of the four international standards setting bodies. Um, that conversation has been very fruitful. And so a group of us are on a panel talking about setting 3D standards and the challenges of it as a foundational principle for metaverse development. And that's tomorrow. Unfortunately, it, it overlaps with some of uh, our online uh, work, but that like this will be uh, recorded. So watch the space, sort of things to come. And Hugh Yuan, the president-elect has some very interesting material and publication about how he sees the metaverse evolving and he's incorporating virtual reality, augmented reality, digital twin, and all the sort of things that overlap in our development of Triple F 3D. Technical workshops. So traditionally TSGs would meet and get funding to meet and we're working on perhaps a, a, an evolved model of that, shall we say, given we may not be able to find one funder for just one workshop. So we might have more than one funder to put it together. We had an impromptu meeting, um, uh, Someone, I think um, Tom might have mentioned earlier about impromptu meetings. So we had one in um, Boston at the annual conference last June that helped um, clarify a few things and then went away and did some more homework. Um, just in discussion to see if we can get something around uh, either San Francisco or UCLA in the spring. Don't know yet. Don't want to surprise anyone who's on this call, but anyway, that's in discussion. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll follow up on that. Hopefully there's, it seems a really good plan to, to actually intentionally have something set up in the Naples June next year, uh, conference. And so we've just started talking about the TSG. And so spoiler alert, if you're interested, hopefully we can have that off. Sorry for the, uh, surprise for organizers and in autumn, 2023 in Basel or Bern were in discussion uh, and uh, Jules, Julian Ramey is on the call I know and we're, we're hopefully going to negotiate something to, to have there as well. So let's end with some quotes from the great Nikos Kazantzakis. Um, some say uh, this work in Triple 3D is a bit of a moonshot. Uh, I think it might be closer to an international space station we can, we'll have to get off the earth and then make sure all the things connect up together. But the non-existent is whatever we have not sufficiently desired. And there is a lot of desire for that, sorry. And um, the second quote is just a nice one for sort of what a metaverse might be, sort of paint your paradise and then go into it. Good, I'll stop there and uh, thank you. Ah, oh, Julie, hello. So I know there's some things in the chat area. Um, Julie and Mike, do you want to help field it and anyone else who's involved? Uh, yeah, I mean, there was there was a little bit of a, I think a couple of people brought up the idea of sort of, you know, what media can Triple F not do or or can, you know, Triple F do 3D? And I sort of said this in the chat, but I can I can just sort of re reiterate that it, it's it's interesting, you know, Ronald, uh, you know, like the term you used, there are Triple F ish ways of doing 3D using a triple IF ish manifest that certain viewers can handle. Uh, so, you know, you can kind of get there, but hopefully what we will do in the TSG is to provide a draft specification for, for really hitting that fully in the future. Yeah, thanks. Mike, do you want to jump in? 
Yeah, I'll jump in. I think Julie's been doing a fantastic job of fielding a lot of the technical questions in the chat. Thank you for that, Julie. Um, to jump in with a quick plug for the community group, um, we meet every four weeks on a Thursday at 5pm UK time. Uh, we are taking a Christmas break because it would have fallen between Christmas and New Year, a festive break. The next meeting is Thursday, 26th of January. I'll paste a link to the community group's calendar. You can always find our, our uh, sessions there. Um, it's a really fantastic group. There's there's various people who are highly technical, various people who are highly creative, and many of the members are both that come along as well. Fantastic spot for sharing ideas, projects, questions, suggestions. I'd encourage anybody to come along. It's a really, really great jumping off point for a lot of kind of online 3D graphics work as well. Uh, so we'd love to see you there. Yeah, thanks. Uh, last week we had the um, last one for the calendar year with a group from France who's a new commercial um, operation to handle very large models in any modern device, smartphones included, and with progressive uh, compression and viewing, which was very interesting. <laughs> but back to the questions. Um, Julie and Mike, if you can help recap, that would be great if you don't mind. There's yeah. a question from Brian. Do you want to jump in, Brian? So I, I will. <laughs> <laughs> I, great. Thank you for the presentation. Um, I will. Uh, I'll say it's sort of on Matt's TSG to extend this olive, olive branch, which we have not yet. Uh, but we are running into sort of the things like you're saying for our georeferencing scenarios and for things like view cones. Uh, for both of those things, there is like a 2D version of it, and that's not really you know in this area. But there's also um, 3D versions of it, and I won't go too far into it because we'll be showing some of that tomorrow. But in particular, I think of things uh, like Imagine Rio and Snapshot, which actually give you the street view and then geo-reference an image onto the thing you're looking at. Yeah. Um, like you're saying, I'm not necessarily worried about that working in Unity. I'm worried about that working in Google Maps. Uh, and so it's just how do I, if I want it to work in Unity and Google Maps, what's the minimum level of data I have to supply to allow for that? Um, and just we're kind of slowly approaching that. I haven't officially asked that question yet, but I think that's where we're heading. So that's why I brought it up. And I'm wondering of your thoughts on being able to go between Unity and Google Maps, for example. No, thanks for bringing it up. Uh, Julie Shavago and Mike, and do you want to come in after or you want to start? I'll have a go. Um, yeah, you, so go, we, you go ahead. Thanks. We, we've uh, we've definitely had you all in mind quite a while because you've got things like topographical data, and then there are some projects that will turn that into, um, you know, actually the mountain ranges and the valleys, etc. That's one of the things. But also, a lot of the map data increasingly and for some time has been in polar coordinates, hasn't it? So uh, be we're moving between that and say older maps, um, turns out it looks similar in a way to what the historical building information management people are, or BIM for heritage. Um, they have similar sort of thing of architectural drawings 2D and then newer scans 3D that they need to match up together, which sounds a lot like what you all have to are challenged with historical maps and new high res georeferencing. How do you fit those together? So. Um, to to quote Shrek, like ogres, we're probably going to need a lot of layers. Um, so, but uh, but yeah, I, in in a way, it's how do we connect up these different um, coordinate systems and resolution differences? But I don't want to steal your tomorrow thunder. Sure, no, and I I won't be talking much on this point because I don't have the answers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, and even further, something that I've noticed is I think things like this, if we can figure it out, would really help with stuff like um, indoor mapping. Like I think of in the indoor markup language and how similar it is to these challenges we're trying to do and how that m m might connect with like some of the um, like support for disabilities. Like, can we tie that into haptic feedback for the blind or... Is there a way to do tonal representation for distance in those scenarios for the hard of hearing? Things like that, which I think um, this area will really approach that. Yeah, uh, the, 
the um the spatial audio and hubs is i think an interesting example of what that might be a bit about as as you approach a bubble that has information and audio cues could be I interesting love i love yeah. that example that was amazing I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah. Just, I'm gonna steal that from you from my own stuff <laughs> <laughs> just give a reference you're welcome to it. sweet all right Ju julie i think you uh and mike you responded to tom miles's question is that right uh yeah the one about yeah that, that was sort of what i was trying to expand a little bit on with with uh you know just talking about what about 3d and triple if though i i do think it's an interesting question what can't be put on triple if maybe that's a bit far afield from from 3d but i actually have no idea what what that list would look like well it's it's a taunting question because um and, and just to be clear tom and, and for everyone we have a lot of uh collaborative effort with triple if uh sorry with europeana and triple if so glenn and others have regular meetings on the kind of 2d but we are connected and we gave a, a couple of us gave a talk at their Europeana 3D task force. And that's kind of they're coming back to that. So we're 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 going to have, continue those conversations in terms of so and they, they want to solve the same thing and they will either help us or wait for us either way. Uh but what can't be put in that's an interesting one. We'll throw that back to the technical editors. <laughs> what's out is anything out of scope um and i guess in metaverse questions uh that's going to be a big issue is anything out of scope and tom if we knew the answer we'd probably be um able to market it but <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much much yeah. appreciated sure thanks but let's keep coming back to that because it's it's a big one um Uh, so I'm just looking through any other questions or does anyone want to open their mic and jump in or follow up on anything? Oh, thanks, Glenn, for the, the link to the um, Metaverse Congress for tomorrow. And again, sorry it overlaps, just couldn't be helped. <laughs> so uh, It is the fifth they've been having um, and they're serious and they helped initiate the Metaverse Standards Forum with the Kronos Group who look after GLTF and GLB, which is the um, compressed version. Uh, so hopefully we'll all be able to catch up. I mean, if, if don't leave this if you want to come to the other and then we'll catch up in uh, recordings or whatever works. And uh, Rosita, I'm glad you, you like the Cousin Zakis quote. It was a late inspiration in a recent conference near his home. Good. Um, yeah, so Josh, you put a link to Imagine Rio project that Brian was mentioning. Great. Yes, that'll have your view cones if you look. Say again? I said that has the view cones. That's why I mentioned it. If you go there, that's what you'll find. Thank you so much. So I guess, um, let me follow up Mike's um, uh, plug and anyone else, uh, you're welcome to come to the TSG, which typically meets the first Tuesdays of the, the month. It's on the calendar. Um, but if, you, if you're if you not so comfortable or confident, come to the community group because um, that's really where a lot of people get started and some come to both. And it's, it's nice always to see familiar faces and uh, we don't bite and <laughs> happy to explain any of this. Um, I think most here will be comfortable with it anyway. But really, we are on this journey. It's going to take us a few years, which is just the, the nature of things. It's uh, more marathon than sprint. Does that seem right? <laughs> Good stuff. Um, I think that's, sorry to jump in, but I think that's the sort of perfect note to end on. I mean, it, that's exactly right. We're, you know, everyone here has an interest in this 3D work. Um, and so I think this is, you know, that call is exactly right. The, the more folks that we have, the more institutions that we have that can support the use cases or that can enumerate the use cases and help us really work through prioritizing and uh, and and aligning those with existing AAA functionality, that's exactly right. So I, I really do, I'll second that. I really urge folks to, to get involved with these groups and that, you know, if anything can help speed up the development of these things, it'll be that, it'll be kind of that um, that group effort sort of locked arms together to, to make some progress. Um, 
So, so I think I, that's yeah. No, I'm, I'm sorry. I one quick point, Brian. You you mentioned about maps. We definitely should have a crossover meeting. We've done that with the museums before, and every once in a while we should you know once a year or something at least. So yeah. sorry. Thanks, Josh. Josh and you have talked to me about that. Yes, I know. Yeah. We'll we'll do um yeah a good 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 co-hosted uh, community meeting maybe um, at the top of the new year, but this is great. Um, so my thanks to you, Ronald, and uh, to Julie Winchester and Mike Boyd as well. Um, so chairs of the three D group who are again shepherd all this amazing effort um, and keep it keep it on task and, and going. Um, we are going to take a break now to the top of the hour. We have the last little bit of session. Um, for today's uh, segment of the online meeting, um, we have the last five lightning talks that we'll go through. Um, so yeah, join us at the top of the hour. And again, we have uh, a few more, uh, another day of sessions tomorrow, um, and that'll be the end of, uh, of the AAAF online meeting. But um, stick around, we'll see you in about 10 minutes, and thanks all. <laughs>